Hey guys, Mellow Monkey here, and I'm bringing you the uh, crevice tutorial that I've been asked for. Uh, it's kind of similar to the Terminal Moraine one. And in this case, I'm playing with the Extreme Killer, and we're Cutter Arbiter, I'm reversing Diablo's Hole, and do that again, and they are Anders uh, Prophet, I believe. Yeah. So, basically, the main thing about this is that I'm not going to talk too much about uh, what your Covenant should do, since basically this really comes down to what you happens between the two UNSCs and it doesn't matter really too much which covenant you have in terms of winning this matchup if the UNSC just wins outright. And so basically UNSC play is just the main important thing here. So there's two possible openers that people will go for. You can go for a barracks opener or you can go for a reactor opener. Uh, since the main two leaders are Anders and Cutter and uh, Forge isn't really good non crevice you can't expand, they'll fall behind. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about that. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, people can go for a... It's possible to go for a Barrack Second on your main base, or a Barrack Second on your Expo, or Barrack First on the Expo, and... or uh, Yeah, but the main thing is that uh, you're not really going to want to go for a Barrack Second on your main, or a Barrack First on your Expo, or anything like that. You're going to want to either go for a Barrack Third on your main, or a Barrack Second on your Expo. Uh, that would give you uh, good things for your marines, and you know, it's very, it's just a standard way to play this matchup. However, uh, I have my Covey Scout, their UNSC, you always want to see when their UNSC goes barracks. That is the most important thing. So, uh, here's the thing. Just like in 1v1, same thing applies to 2v2. Reactor openers counter barracks openers. So if you do reactor about the same time, or you know, like, one uh, like one slot after or like half a slot, it's gonna be close. Uh, depending on the distance of the hook, then you'll counter them. So uh, because I mean Marines, they're not getting in the hook if I have gunner hogs. So I see barracks third, so I'm gonna go reactor second on my expo. Reactor second on the expo is like reactor three and a half. So I'll get gunner in time to easily be able to stop him from getting in that hook. The next important thing is like I'm playing the pad delay game right now because I gotta I'm gonna afford as many hogs as possible because as long as I don't let him get the hooks it doesn't really matter. So I'm just making sure that I have as many hogs as possible. And by this uh, then I'm just you know, I'm just gonna get my gunner and everything and make sure I'm over here. So the next important thing is that you wanna have your covenant uh, let you know which side he sends his first marines to. So I know, uh, I didn't actually see, I just guessed this game, that he sent his first marine to the outside reactor, but if he sent his first marine to the middle reactors, then I want my hogs there. I don't really want to wait right in front of his base, although I could, because I really want to just wait as long as possible to deal with the deal with his marines until I absolutely have to, because Gunner's researching, and I don't want to be losing my hogs before Gunner. But you saw how he, he went to the outside first, so I went to the outside with my first hogs, and then I rallied my global rally point through the middle, so that my new hog is going to come through the middle as opposed to going around the outside. Basically, you go, you, pit, you put your initial hogs one way and you rally the, the new hog the other way. And by this, I'm able to actually see I see him going for the middle reactors. I know he's going he, I know he's going to be in the hogs. They're perfectly timed to just get the ram on that marine and deny it from getting to the middle reactors. E Z. So that's the thing about barracks openers, and reactor openers. Uh, reactor openers are better if you lock everything down, and usually your Covenant actually should be able to deny the Middle Marines for you. Because if your Covenant goes through the Temple Fourth, which he should, it's a little delayed Temple Fourth, when he's coming through the middle, uh, that's about the time the Marines are getting down there from a Barracks Third. So your Covenant actually should just stop both of the Marines, but it doesn't always happen that way depending on what your Covenant likes to do. But he doesn't have any hooks, he's on. He's completely locked down. He doesn't have, he doesn't have his hogs, he doesn't have his reactor and I have more hooks. So he's not getting in the hooks anytime soon, and that's just huge for me. So the next most important thing is now I'm going for a barracks fifth on my main base. I could have gone fourth, but I don't think you can afford it. I don't do fourth because I, I, you can't afford it. You can't afford it and keep making all the hogs. As you saw, I was really pressed for money, so I just wanted to get the extra supply pad down. And these hogs will also be useful in denying summits, so that my covey will get ahead that way. I can deny the summit on one of the covenant bases, and my covenant can deny the summit on the on the other covey base, and then we'll have banshees, and they won't. And uh, if you notice here, like I'm, if I don't get the hooks for some reason, uh, with my marines, like say gets hit on a flood or something like that, I mean I'll just sit there. I'll be upgrading pads, but I'm not going to go for fortress right away because uh, you don't need to, because on this map. 
you're getting, usually you'd go for Fortress so that you can get a better eco while, uh, while going for, uh, while being able to get your tech on your base. So that's the thing. The thing is that here is you, you have, you're going to be getting in like three of the reactors. So, well, you don't need those extra spots in your base to put up tech because you're just getting in the reactor. So your eco is essentially just going to be the same on, in one of these situations as opposed to the other ones. Like on the other maps, like on the non-hook maps, the extra two spots will be used for reactors. So that's there's your that's that's where that's where there that's where that's going. But here, you, what would you build? You just build extra supply pads. You may as well just upgrade your pads if you're just going to build those extra supply pads. But of course, once you get all your pads upgraded and everything, then you can go for that later. So I'm messing up a bit with the flood. The profit is just sitting in the middle. That's annoying, but not a big deal. I've uh, I've stopped making hogs since I have both my vehicle depots up. And uh, the main thing here is that we're just getting banshees and we're controlling the hops. So basically, pick your, take your pick, uh, barracks opener, reactor opener, depending on how confident you are in your abilities to deny them. If you're not too confident in yourself, then just go for the, uh, go for the barracks opener, it's really pretty simple. Uh, but keep in mind that if someone does go for a reactor opener, you could end up SOL and they could just keep you out of the hooks all game long and then you're just like, well, crap. So, do you want to be at their mercy or not? Up to you. I don't like to be at their mercy. I like to be able to control the game with my hogs. So, yeah. Uh, the next thing here is that uh, you could also uh, go for... I mean, uh, let's just say if you're reversing a forge. Because a forge, the best thing they can do... Sometimes they'll just go like barracks first or something and get in the hook, but that doesn't matter. You see that... If you see... You'll, you'll scout that out. And you'll see that and you'll be like, oh, hey, you're doing that. I'll just go barracks third and then I'll take the hook and flamers and stuff. That's easy. Or if you see them going hogs, which they should, they should go hogs and then expand late, then all you have to do is you have two options. You can go for your own hogs and then get a later barracks and just get more hogs than them. Or you can just ignore the hooks entirely, go straight for tanks, and then go for the hooks after you have tanks out. Because you can't deny your tanks with hogs. And then you'll have tanks and only have hogs and maybe some maybe some marines or something, but tanks kill both of those. And then you could easily just take all the hooks and then you won't be able to get in them. So that's that. So it's just take your pick on that sort of thing. So basically now I have pretty good hook control because I have the outside two hooks and the Prophet was sitting in the middle so I couldn't get those and he had tech two on his Prophet. So now we get to talk about uh, what your Covenant should do, but only for only Bruce. So the main thing here is that Suicide Grunts are terrible and the Banshees, Banshees, Banshees are the way to go. Because when you're on double base and your Ecos, you have, you, everyone has such a good Eco, spending money to hurt their Eco by losing units, like spending su suicide guns, they're not cost effective when, when the other team has this many pads. So since the other team has this many pads already, you don't really want to be building suicide grunts. If you build suicide grunts though, you have to kill a base to make it worth it. So one thing about the stream killer is I told him, since we're versing an Anders, that he should just build six suicide grunts, the Anders will either be forced to upgrade this base right away, or they're going to lose it. They're going to lose it regardless. Anders is losing base. Anders cannot keep this base. Doesn't happen. I'm sorry. Doesn't happen. Especially in, like, Anders Arbiter it doesn't happen. The base dies, because you cannot protect it. So... That base is dead, but the main thing is Extreme Killer should have been able to do more damage because he let pads come back up after they were killed already. So always just deny new pads. Don't let him get new pads up and then use, do extra damage to the other stuff. But basically that. So I was forced to use a Mac Blast that I shouldn't have had to, but either way it's dead. Dead base, now we have more bases and, than that, and that's easy. And I'm just you know, sitting in the hooks, comfortably building, comfortably building tanks. Generally, I like to try to get two pads upgraded initially, uh, but if I can't get in the hooks, I'll just upgrade more pads, and then I'll just build more tanks later. And with the better, with the better eco, I'll be able to mix in Spartans earlier, basically. If you can't get to like PT or something like that, you can build the Spartans to get in your tanks for a while. But if you uh, if you can't get PT, that's great. Getting PT early on this map is totally fine. Just because it's too hard, because usually if you're getting PT early, it means that they're not in the hooks in the first place. Which basically means that they don't have tanks to push uh, to push on you and make make you pay for it. So basically it's all about having the hook control. Another thing you could do is you could actually put three tech up on your base and steal PT, oh, two tech up on your base to steal PT. But that's really only in like desperate situations. I've done it before, and I've won games because of it, but 
it's not the ideal thing. Generally, you gotta judge the pace of the game, and if it's getting to the point where it's later game and you don't have PT yet, you need it. But for the most part, you can you can go without it for the longest time. I mean, I'm just versing Goss, basically, so since I'm versing Goss, I'm just gonna mass up my uh, tank as long as my Covenant has air lead, and I have one Wolverine from the early game. Left over, that's totally cool with me. So, I mean, we, we just have vamps, small of tanks, and that'll be cool. Uh, but in terms of, like, positioning and stuff, the... Okay, let's just explain this really quickly. The green has the best spawn possible. His base is closer to every reactor on the map. It is the closest base to the middle reactors, and it is the closest base to his outside reactor. Because... Uh, with that outside reactor, uh, if you look at it, the distance from blue space to that outside reactor is actually longer than the distance from green space to that reactor, just because of the way the terrain is laid out. Another thing to note is that when you build marines, they come out of the right side of the base, like the front right. So that means that his marines are actually still closer to the middle reactors because they actually come out closer to them. So that's another thing to note. So that is good spawn. Bad spawn is obviously blue's base, because it's gonna be farther away from that outside reactor than green space, and it's then farther away from the middle reactors from green space. So yeah, bad spawn that one. I'm actually relatively close to the middle reactors because of my base spawn, but then again I would get beat to the outside reactor, but then the UNSC isn't on that side. So I mean at this point in the game I'm just kinda messing around. So after you've gotten the hooks, that's just the main important thing. You want the hooks. Uh, he, I doesn't, I didn't have to let him get this base back up again. Well, I mean, Blue didn't have to let him get this base back up again. But I mean, I could push. I could go back. I mean, I just built. I think I just built a Spartan just because I wanted to get the power to her and then put the Spartan in the tank. I think that's what I did. I don't know what I did. I don't really care. So yeah, there is one one base Goss first these tanks. So that's not gonna work. So what else? What else? Okay, yeah, taking a triple base, always a good thing later in the game. But in the beginning of the game, not so practical. Because in the beginning of the game, uh, your Covenant's gonna have one of the bases, and the bases are too hard to defend early in the game. Because you're gonna have so few units. So, there's another thing about this map. It, that base is hard to defend, because it's all the way over there on the side, and then hey, they push in your cubby base, and you're all the way out of position. That's, that's one of the things you gotta keep in mind. Positioning on this map is so crucial, but it's one of my favorite things, because I actually really love split pushing. On this map, every map, it's really good, actually. So you gotta keep that in mind. Don't run, like when I say split pushing, I, I don't mean run two of your tanks into their entire army and lose them. That's not what I mean. I mean push a tank here, a tank there, just so they can't really, just so you're always pushing on them, doing damage, and heck, they have to decide where they wanna move their tanks. So you'll do some damage, and then when they come try to kill you, just run away. Simple. So I don't do it in this game because we're versing Goss, and I just want to keep stuff together. And I think I end up like just pushing with all my tanks. I don't remember what to do here. But yeah, just slowly upgrade all your pads once you've got your production going. Generally, try to get two before you start producing. If you can't get the hook, if you're later to get in the hooks, when you're building hogs, you're going to get in the hooks later. So uh, just leave a spot open on your main and a spot open on your expo so you put both vehicle depots up on this up up at the same time. And upgrade pads while you're while you're sitting there waiting, pretty much, because you're gonna have a bit of extra money. And then just keep keep producing from there. Uh, but you can send your first tank around, like depending on where you need to, where you need it to control hooks, you can send it around and push it on the cubby base if they don't have too many banshees yet, which they shouldn't, because it should be at the point in the game where they're just starting to get their summits going, like just trying to get them up. So you actually should be able to deny a summit or so. Or you push it onto the UNSC base, through the middle, like just push tanks like everywhere. Like send two tanks one way, two tanks another way, maybe a few in the middle, like sure they if they're gonna like try to take their the middle hooks with their first tanks, which they, they probably will, you could stop them. You very well could. Uh, but if they're gonna like try to take the middle hooks with their uh, with their tanks, then you could just knock pads off their base or kill their vehicle depot or their summits and stuff. So that's also really good. Like, two power turret tanks just loose on a cubby base is just so deadly because you can instantly canny down a pad and then just knock down another. You're like, you're pretty much guaranteed two pads, and then you just run a tank away and send another tank all the way back down to their back bases. Because you can approach their bases from five different, five, essentially five different directions. It's mainly three, but since the back spaces each have that path along the side, so that's an extra two spots. 
That's why Goss is generally considered really good on this map, because you can approach from so many different angles. So, same thing with tanks, just split your tanks, you know, use it that way. And, but that's just in, like, tanks versus tanks. So, what else? There's the, uh, yeah, you see, now I'm trying to go for Fortress, because I have all my pads upgraded, and I don't think I built all my Spartans yet, but I can't really build those while they're sitting on my base, so I'm just gonna get my expansion, you know, upgraded, maybe I'll build some turrets and stuff. And just get another vehicle depot, since I actually did send a few tanks back. Just because I feel like I could just push it off. I didn't think he was going to have that many hogs. Because he kept losing his base. So, that's that. The, what else there is there? There's, uh, I mean, there's just like the split pushing, upgrading paths. Always want to, as you want to see when you're Mac growing up, you always want to try to get to a triple base after you have like all your paths upgraded. And, you know, with that triple base, like on the sides or anything, that'll just help you continue pushing and getting eventually to your field armory tech. Because generally you're gonna, between, when you have two bases, you have to pick between a third vehicle depot, a field armory, or a barracks. So, on the second base tech, you're generally gonna want a barracks. Simple. Get your Spartans, good upgrades. That'll make your army significantly stronger. But then when you get a third base, you still have that same decision. Generally on a third base, you're gonna put a third you're gonna put your third vehicle depot and you're gonna put a field armor. So that you can get like reinforcements or maybe reserves or stuff. So um that's just it's just the way it is. Like every time you get a base, you get like another vehicle depot and maybe a new tech. But I mean there's no more new tech after the third base. So yeah. And, oh yeah, with split pushing, you could just push a few tanks to each one of their bases, especially in like base trade situations, and just to kill their production. Like, have two tanks killing one vehicle depot, two tanks killing another vehicle depot. Then they can't make more tanks, and you're still getting more tanks out. And then maybe have like a tank or two killing the summits, and then it's like, hey, they're not getting anything new out, but I'm my team's still getting stuff out. So then you'll just have more stuff when you actually have to engage them. Sure, sure, they might like kill a main base faster, but it doesn't matter if they kill a main base faster, they're not gonna like be able to come back in time to stop you from killing a base. Like you're gonna do just as much damage, your damage is just spread out and it's better because you've denied their production. And I mean I think that's the main thing, those are the main things about Crevice. The beginning is you pick your barracks or re uh, reactor opener for the hogs. Uh, I definitely prefer the hogs, but you can do whatever you'd like. I, I know people prefer different things. Uh, Anders can actually go for like a reactor fourth. Uh, Anders can go for like a, re a reactor fourth uh, and still be able to deny uh, the, all the hooks with the uh, with gunner. Or you can even go for the reactor second next, but it's still fine. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I didn't talk about that. If there's if uh, if both people go for a barracks opener, then it's like you know just ramming. It comes down to like maybe ramming the marine and stuff, but. Generally, with double people going barracks openers, you're better off like going for the middle hooks and then just getting both of those, because then you'll have two hooks and then maybe they'll have one on the outside. And with, uh, but if they also go for a reactor opener, if you don't see, if you see them not going barracks third uh, on their main base, then just go for a reactor fourth because that'll give you the most amount of hogs. Because when you go for like a reactor third on your main or reactor second on the expo, you're gonna be one hog down from where you could be. So just get the mo most amount of hogs and then get a barracks fifth on the main. So that, that, that's what happens if you both go for reactor openers. It just comes down to like controlling one of the hooks or so. With, because you're going to have these stupid little hog fights. Generally, you're going to be better off not just defending your marine, instead counterattacking and killing their marine. Because, I mean, if you're defending your marine, all you can do is essentially try to stop them from killing your marine. Whereas they'll still just get their marine through, so why wouldn't you just go kill their marine? It's essentially the same, it's without risk of losing your hogs to their hogs. And even if they are do have their hogs on, the, on their protecting their marine, if you kill that marine and they don't kill yours, hello, you have the hook. So, yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, there's nothing, nothing else really to say. I mean, banshees are always going to be the thing. Oh yeah, so now I can actually talk about a little bit about the cubby side, uh, because may as well. Uh, generally, you're gonna want to go for like have your cubby go for like a top fourth on their main base, and then maybe summit fifth on main base, summit fourth expo, or you can go uh, summit it, temp, temple fifth main, summit fourth expo, summit sixth main by going right into a citadel and not upgrading paths because you want to just get as much stuff out as possible. So if you're versing say a brute, 
and you're the arbiter, you want to click up that base right away in the beginning, and then and ha and then scout right away. You want to scout to see if their brood expanded or if he didn't expand. If he expanded, then keep your expansion base. Easy game. Um, if he didn't, if he didn't expand, then don't expand, and then just play defense, tip like like usual with uh, temple third and maybe a turret or so. And so. If he did expand, then he'll probably build like brutes and grunts and stuff like that. We're not building suicide grunts. You have to you actually you could if you wanted to, you could build suicide grunts and then try to go for the UNSC bases. But here's the thing: uh, suicide when you kill their bases and everything's all said and done, he still has units and you don't. So you're gonna want units. The easiest way to do this, and you don't want to defend that because you're just there's no gain from that. You're just gonna be losing stuff. So to defend it, you don't. You just counterattack. And by you just go, uh, you get your early banshees and just push, and you'll have basically you will everyone's gonna lose their bases, except you're gonna have banshees and they're gonna have some like roots and grunts. And I'd rather have the banshees, especially on this map, because the distance between bases is so great. So I mean that's just the main those are the main things to consider when playing on this map. Uh, banshees are really good, and and uh, hogs are also good for controlling the hogs. So early game really revolves around just getting that hook control as the UNSC, and then whoever's ahead in UNSC really is just going to dictate the pace of the game afterwards, primarily by just having more tanks than the other team and probably power to, her, to their stock or something. I just find it works out that way. So you can see their profit, actually. <laughs> I, I saw the profit at Tech 3 for a while, so I was like, oh no, he's going to get sacrificed, but uh, he, he didn't want sacrifice, I guess. He just wanted a flying profit. So that's a thing. And I mean, this game is just winding down. There's a few things. Uh, uh, maybe I could have been better this game. Uh, I think I just missed up like a few rallies on getting like the hooks and stuff. But I mean, other than that, it's just plain and simple. I have two vehicle depots up. I have all my pads upgraded. I think I actually have three vehicle depots up because I have my fortress expo. And I was just saving money in case I needed to click my teammate or take another expansion base elsewhere. And I built the turrets to deter banshees and hogs because I don't want to leave all my stuff there. And if you have the hooks, you're gonna win. That's, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And somehow we kept that my teammate's base alive. I guess they just left early and didn't realize it didn't die. I don't know. Who knows? So, I mean, I, I don't see this game going on too much longer. And uh, Prophet is uh, is showing my tank to his boss because he towers above me with his flying Prophet legendary upgrade. And uh, yeah, I don't have too much to say, so I'm actually just gonna end the commentary a bit early here and let the rest of this play out so that you guys can. I mean, there's not really much to see. And all I wanted to talk about was the early game. Obviously, Power Tripper beats Goss. Obviously, I didn't lose any of my bases, and they lost all of theirs. That's another very important thing in base trades, is if one person doesn't lose their base, and you guys lose all of your bases, you lost. Because they're going to be able to still make stuff, and you're not going to be able to make stuff. Alright, so I'll see you guys next time. Uh, have a great day, and if there's anything I left out of this, just ask me in the comments, and I'll definitely respond to you. You know what? I did forget something. 
sorry about that, guys. Uh, I'll probably just add this in. I'll move this up. Oh no. Okay. Uh, in terms of like, getting the hooks, so basically you may someone's gonna get the hook first with the mariner. So just put like two flamers, send them over there, and take them out. Simple. It only, it only takes two flamers to take some out of the hook. So that's that. You yeah, don't don't be afraid to do that. If they have hogs, all it may not be worth sending flamers into their gunner or grunt or a gunnerless hogs. So just keep that in mind, and eventually you may have to use tanks to help yourself out. All right, see you guys later for real this time.